All right, these are the notes for um, target 3B over protein synthesis. Um, so make sure you are writing this stuff down so that way you can use these notes for um, the practice assignments and the um, assessment that you will take at the end. Um, with that, we're going to get started. All right, so by the end of this target, this is what I want to see if you can do. I want to see if you can construct an explanation based on evidence for how the structure of DNA determines the structure of proteins. Um, so um, by this point, you should have done the uh, DNA practice, so you should know what DNA is. Um, it is the stuff that makes us us. It's what determines um, your eye color, your skin color, your hair color, how tall you are, um, your athletic ability, how fast you metabolize food, how slow you metabolize food, all of those things are determined by your DNA. Um, so we should be pretty familiar with that um, from that DNA reading as well as those questions that you had to get 100% on. Um, so with that, we are going to start taking our notes. We need to talk about what proteins are because we are talking about protein synthesis, which is making proteins. Um, so we need to know what proteins are. So proteins make up all living things. There are proteins in your nails. There's proteins in your um, skin, your eye color. So your proteins in your um, skin and your eye, proteins in your skin and your hair are called melanin. They um, determine what your skin color is going to be. So if you have a lot of melanin, you're going to have um, a really dark skin tone. If you don't have a lot of melanin, you're going to have a really light skin tone. Um, things like keratin um, make up your hair and your nails, um, so that's what makes your um, nails kind of hard. Um, you have pigment in your eyes, which is a protein, so the color in your eyes is determined by proteins. If you have uh, brown eyes, you have brown pigment, which is um, coded by your DNA. If you, um, your muscles are made of proteins, um, so how much muscle mass you can have, typically men have more muscle mass than women, is determined by your DNA. So your DNA determines all of these different proteins, and your proteins um, kind of make you um, you. So we need to talk about how do we get from DNA to the proteins. So how do we get from I have um, kind of lighter brown skin, how did I get those directions from my DNA that said I'm going to have light brown skin to actually having melanin that gives me my light brown skin? How did I go from I have brown eyes, how did I go from my DNA instructions that say I'm going to have brown eyes to actually having brown pigment in my eyes that make my eyes brown? Um, I am a female so I have a decent amount of muscle mass not as much as like my brother who's a male so how did my DNA instructions that said I'm gonna have this amount of muscle or X amount of muscle um, make that muscle and then how did my brother's DNA go from saying he's gonna have a lot of muscle to actually making those mo proteins that make up your muscle so that's what we are going to talk about for this target so functions of proteins, what they do. Um, proteins do important things like help fight disease, build new body tissues, help with digestion. Um, I gave you those examples of proteins that we talked about, um, but these are some examples, or excuse me, these are some of the things that proteins do. So we have proteins in our gut that help us digest food. Um, we have proteins like our um, different immune cells that help us uh, fight off um, infections, diseases, stuff like that. So now we need to talk about, like I said, how did we get from the DNA, which is our instructions to build those proteins, to making proteins um, and getting those proteins which ex help us to express our traits. So this is called protein synthesis, protein synthesis, excuse me, and protein synthesis is the process of making new proteins. So just as a reminder, make sure you're writing this stuff down. Um, I'm talking pretty fast, so you probably need to pause the video and write stuff down and then listen to me explain things on this video. Um, that's how I would approach this. That way you uh, know, that way you can get this stuff written down so you don't have to try and write and listen to me as I talk at the same time. So protein synthesis is the process of making new proteins. We go from DNA to what we call messenger RNA or mRNA to eventually getting our protein. So we're going to break this process down. So the first step of protein synthesis is transcription. So we need to write that down somewhere. First step of protein synthesis is transcription and here is our definition of transcription. Transcription is the process where DNA is copied into RNA to make a messenger RNA. So we start with DNA, this double helix, and we um, change it into messenger RNA or mRNA. And the reason we need to do this is because DNA um, needs to stay in the nucleus. Um, so DNA has to stay in the nucleus, so we need to make what we call messenger RNA. Um, so like I said, 
DNA has the genetic code for protein that needs to be made. However, proteins are made by ribosomes that are outside of the nucleus. DNA is too large to leave the nucleus because it is double-stranded, but RNA is single-stranded, um, so it can leave. So we can see our difference between our DNA and our RNA here. So we have our DNA that's double-stranded. We should know this from our DNA reading, but RNA is only single-stranded. So instead of having those two strands that kind of make this double helix shape or this ladder, um, we just have one of those strands. So DNA stays in the nucleus, but RNA will leave the nucleus um, so that those proteins can actually be made. So DNA is kind of like our instructions. Um, and then we make a copy of those instructions and we send those instructions out so that the protein that we want to make can actually be made. All right, so now we need to talk about um, what's going on with our DNA. We're going to label it real quick. If you would like to draw out this picture, you can. Um, it's not something that's going to be on the test. It's not essential, but if you are still kind of confused about DNA or if you find that you are confused as we go through um, this PowerPoint, as I'm going through this vocabulary, this might be a good thing to go back on and then to um, draw and label. So we have our DNA. Um, this entire like this circle and this uh, pentagon shape here is what we call our DNA backbone. So we have two on each side. This is what makes up the sides of our ladder for our DNA. So we will label this as our DNA backbone. It's made up of a sugar and it's made up of a phosphate group. So we call it, sometimes you'll hear it as the sugar phosphate backbone. Um, so that's what makes those two sides of those ladders. Um, and these two sides of our ladder hold in what we call our bases. Um, so we will get into this in a second, but we have four types of bases. Um, adenosine, um, or sorry, excuse me, adenine, um, cyanine, guanine, and um, which one am I missing? Tyrosine, that's it. So adenine, tyrosine, cyanine, and guanine are our four bases. We just abbreviate those as ATCG. Um, so those are our four bases that are held by our DNA backbone together. Um, and then we have these two bases that are bonded. So each time we have um, a base that will be bonded and we will talk about which bases bond together here in a second as well. And then the last thing that we're gonna label is this entire thing. So it includes a base, it includes a sugar, and it includes a phosphate group, and we call that a nucleotide. So DNA is made up of nucleotides, um, which is a base, a sugar, and a phosphate all together. Um, so those are kind of our units of DNA. This is our picture of DNA. So again, if you're someone who you're not really sure about DNA, this would be a really good thing to write down in your notes. All right, so now we need to talk about and continue to talk about that process of transcription and what's happening in transcription that allows us to go from DNA to a protein eventually. So during transcription, part of the DNA unzips and is used as a template to assemble complementary nucleotides into messenger RNA. So we are making our messenger RNA um, from our DNA during here. So our DNA is going to kind of unzip and unwind. Um, it's going to serve as a template for um, our messenger RNA. So this is how we know what is going into the messenger RNA because we get it directly from the DNA. So when we are making this messenger RNA, like I said, our DNA is made up of those um, bases. So we need to figure out which bases match together because we're going to make what we call a complementary template. So it's actually going to be the opposite of what we have on our DNA. Um, so it's going to be the opposite of what we have on our DNA because when we um, make our uh, DNA, we are going, or excuse me, when we eventually make our protein, we are going to use this messenger RNA to be able to make the protein. So we need it to be kind of the message that's being sent from the DNA. The DNA is the instructions. This is our copy of the instructions so that we can send it out of the nucleus to make the protein. So when we are making these, um, when we are making these messenger RNAs, we are going to have complementary base pairs um, that always match together. So when we are talking about RNA or messenger RNA, a or adenosine or excuse me adenine matches with u uracil so when we're talking about dna a usually matches with t but when we are talking about making a messenger rna a is going to match with u um c cyanine is going to match with g guanine so that is going to be the same and dna c matches with g for um, messenger rna a matches with u c matches with g so these are going to always, always, always match up. This is something that you need to write down in your notes so that way you don't have to memorize this. And when I ask you to create a complementary um, DNA, you will have that all ready to go.
Next, we need to talk about the second step of protein synthesis, which is translation. So we have our messenger RNA. How do we go from messenger RNA to actually getting a protein? So translation is the process where a messenger RNA is decoded to create a protein. So we have our messenger RNA. Now we need to actually make the protein. So to start this process, our body uses what we call transfer RNA or tRNA. So tRNA serves two purposes. tRNA has an amino acid at the top, and then tRNA has an anticodon at the bottom. So here at the top, we can see this little um, purple ball is our amino acid that goes at the top, and then we have our anticodon, um, which is at the bottom. So amino acids are small molecules that come together in a specific order to create a protein. So amino acids are what's going to build your protein. Proteins we eat are broken down into individual amino acids and then rearranged into new proteins according to the needs and directions of our DNA. So when you eat stuff um, like chicken, when you eat stuff like uh, beans, those have proteins in it. Um, so when your body eats those, you break down those proteins. Um, into individual amino acids, and so then we use those amino acids to then make our own proteins. So we need to know how to um, line up these amino acids so they make the protein that we want, because there's only 20 amino acids, so we need to actually figure out, okay, how do we make these, um, re rearrange these 20 amino acids so that it gets a specific protein that we want. So the mRNA carrying the DNA instructions and the tRNA carrying the amino acids meet in the ribosome so the protein can begin to be made. So this picture to the right is kind of what it looks like. We have these little tRNAs, and I remember those because they actually look like Ts. We have the amino acids that are at the top, and then we have our um, mRNA that's at the bottom. This little bluish green thing surrounding them is the ribosome. So that's them meeting in the ribosome. The tRNA connects to the mRNA. And we start to build these really long strands of um, proteins, kind of like beads on a necklace. Um, so we need to figure out how does the tRNA know where to go. So once in the ribosome, the bases on the messenger RNA strand are grouped into threes and code for a specific amino acid. So these three bases are called a codon. So every time you see three bases in a row, that's going to be your codon. So when we're reading um, messenger RNA, when we're reading DNA, we read that in pairs of three. That is our codon. So this specific codon that I have up here as a picture is GCA. So that is the order um, that the codon will go in. It's GCA, and that's how we read it. All right, so here we have a picture of kind of what's happening in the ribosome, a zoomed up picture. So this is the process of translation where we are taking our tRNA, um, we are matching it up to our messenger RNA, and we are starting to create our amino acid chain, which will eventually become our protein. So we need to kind of label it so you know what's going on. I would draw out this picture because um, it'll be really helpful for you when you try and uh, when you're going through and you're figuring out what translation is and how it's happening. Um, so this is how we know what um, tRNA should match with the mRNA, and this is how we get the specific order of amino acids that will eventually make our protein. So. We're going to start with our tRNA. So this whole entire thing is our tRNA. It's made up of two components. The first one is our amino acid that's at the top. So this yellow ball is our amino acid. It's a specific type of amino acid. We can see that there's a red one. We can see that there's a blue one. So there's 20 different kinds, but for this specific tRNA, it's going to have this yellow amino acid. And then we can see that it has what we call an anticodon at the bottom. So remember, a codon and anticodon are three bases. Um, so it's going to be these three letters, A, U, C. So that is our anticodon, that's how we read it. We read these in chunks of three, which is why we have these little red lines down here. So we have AUC and AU, or sorry, UAC, and UAC matches up with this yellow um, amino acid, and this entire thing is our tRNA. So now this tRNA we can see is connected to our messenger RNA down here. So this whole entire purple thing with these letters on it, with these purple letters, is our messenger RNA. And our messenger RNA has what we call a codon on it. So this codon is complementary to this um, tRNA, which is our anticodon. So our U, again, matches with A always. The A matches with U. Um, C matches with G. So this is how we know um, what tRNA should go where. When we have an AUG, we're going to have it match to UAC. Um, and the UAC ends up having a yellow amino acid on it. So we know that when we have AUG on our messenger RNA, we're going to get an amino acid, um, which will be our um, amino first amino acid in our protein sequence. So 
that was kind of a lot. We are going to do some practice for um, how to make a messenger RNA and how to make a um, protein. So um, with that, we are going to get this practice started. Um, I would write down these practice problems because this is exactly what you're going to have to do for the practice assignments and exactly what you're going to have to do for your test. One more thing um, before we do these practice problems is how we know um, what proteins go where. So how do we as people figure this out? Um, so to determine which codons on the mRNA match with each amino acid, we use a codon chart. So we are going to use this chart. It looks very, very confusing, but we're going to break it down and we're going to figure out how to use it and we're going to figure out what it means. Um, so that way you can go from a DNA sequence to a messenger RNA to a protein, which is what this target is asking you to be able to do. All right, so now we need to do a practice problem so that you are prepared when you have to do this for your practice assignments and your uh, test. So if we look at our directions, it says using the DNA strand below, we will practice the process of transcribing DNA to messenger RNA and then translating messenger RNA to an amino acid chain or a protein. Um, so here we have our DNA strand. Uh, we need to first get that DNA strand into a messenger RNA through the process of uh, transcription. So we are going to start by breaking this DNA strand down to its codons. So if we remember a codon is um, three bases together. So it'll look something like this. We have ATA space GAT space TAG space TTC space GAA space ATC. So those are our codons. Um, next thing that we need to do is start to transcribe them. So we need to make the complementary um, codons for this DNA strand. So if I look at my first DNA strand, I, or excuse me, if I look at my first codon, I have ATA. So when I look, if I look at my cheat sheet down here, if you do not have this written down, I highly, highly suggest writing it down. Um, a matches with U, T matches with A, C matches with G, and G matches with C. So um, if I have my A here, I know that A is going to match with U, so I could put a U first. If I have my T here, T matches with A, so I can put a T second. And then I have another A, and I know that A matches with U, so I'm going to put a U, so it'll look like this. So U, A, U. A matches with U, T matches with A, A matches with U. I'm going to do the same thing for my second codon. I look at my second codon, I have G, A, T. G is going to match with C, A is going to match with U, and T is going to match with A. So I will end up with C, U, A. G matches with C, A matches with U, T matches with A. I'm going to look at my third codon. I have TAG. I know that T matches with A, A matches with U, and G matches with C. So I will have AUC. I look at my fourth one. <coughs> I see I have TTC. T matches with A. I have another T matches with A, and I have a C, which will match with G. So I will have AAG. Look at my next one. I have GAA. I know that G matches with C, A matches with U. And then I have another A, which will match with U. So I'll get CUU. And then I look at my last codon. I have ATC. You know that A matches with U, T matches with A, and C matches with G. So I would write it out as UAG. So that is all you are doing when you are doing the process of um, transcription. You are just matching your bases. A always matches with U, T always matches with A, and C always matches with G. Um, and then G always matches with C. So those are the important things that we need to remember. So we are making our messenger protein, remember, or our messenger RNA. So that way this messenger RNA can leave the nucleus and it can, and it can be used to start making our amino acid chain, which will be our protein. So we are going to practice doing that next. So now that we have gotten done with transcription, where you have made our messenger RNA, now we need to do our second part of protein synthesis, which is um, translation. So we are going to use that messenger RNA and we are going to use it to create um, an amino acid chain, aka a protein. So these are our amino acids. This is our amino acid wheel. We are going to use this amino acid wheel to um, take this messenger RNA and start making our amino acid protein <coughs> chain. So first, we're going to start with our codons again. We have UAU as our first codon. So we are going to start with the large letter U here in the middle, and we are going to move to the next letter. In this case, it'll be A. And then we're going to go to our third letter, which in this case, it's U. 
and that gives us the amino acid tyrosine. So we can write tyrosine up here on that line. So again, if you, you do not need to rewrite this amino acid wheel because that will be provided for you every time you do um, a practice assignment or um, a, um, the, your assessment. However, you should be writing down this example. So I would write down your RNA strand and then I would write down the complementary amino acids so that you can um, start to understand how to do this because you'll have to do it on your own here in a second. So we did our first one. We can move to our next codon. We're going to do the exact same thing. We have CUA, so we start with our big letter C. We move to our um, second largest letter, which is the U, right there in the middle. And then we move to our last one. Um, in this case, it's an A. Um, and that gives us leucine for our amino acids. So we can write leucine up on our strand. I'll do one more with you, and then you need to practice doing the rest of them on your own so you can check your work and make sure that you know how to do this. Um, the first one, I'm sorry, we're on the third codon, so we have A, U, C, so we start with our large letter A, we move to our smaller letter U, and then we move to the last small letter, which in this case is going to be C, so that would give us isoleucine, so we can write that up on our line, we have isoleucine. So here, you need to pause the video, you need to figure out the next um, three on your own, um, and then play the video again to make sure that you did it correctly, because again, you're going to have to do this on your own. So now that you've tried it on your own, um, these are the next three. So we have lysine as our third one for our AAG. We have CUU, which will give us leucine, and then we have AUG, which will give us this stop. So this stop is not an amino acid. It's actually where our mRNA tells us, okay, we can stop building our protein. It's completely done. We don't need to keep adding any more amino acids to it because when we make a protein, it has to be a specific amount of amino acids, and those amino acids have to be in a specific order. So for example, this protein, the order is tyrosine, leucine, isoleucine, lysine, and leucine again, and then we're stopping. If it were in a different order, if or if they were different amino acids, that would give us um, a different protein entirely. So it's important that we get this order correct, um, because this is how our body knows and recognizes, okay, this is the protein that we're using, um, we're good to go. All right, so here we have a very nice review of um, the protein synthesis process um, in this video. So now that you know about protein synthesis, now that you've gotten these notes down, um, we need to watch this video because it's a lot of information and it's a lot all at once. So this video does a really good job of recapping everything that we have learned. After learning about DNA, have you ever wondered how can the DNA actually result in a trait? Let's take an example, like eye color. Yes, your DNA has the genetic information it codes for the color of your eyes. Your eye color is based on the pigment that is inside the eyes. But in order to have that pigment, you have genes, which are portions of DNA, that can code for proteins, which help make that pigment. So what we're going to talk about is how your DNA can lead to the making of a protein. This process is called protein synthesis. Synthesis essentially means to make something. So protein synthesis means to make protein. And you may wonder, what's a big deal about proteins? Well, you may not realize this, but proteins are kind of a big deal. They do all kinds of things. Proteins are involved in transport, in structure, in acting as enzymes that make all kinds of materials, in protecting the body, and so much more. You've got to make proteins. It's essential for you to live. And what is so cool is that you are making proteins right now as you sit and watch this video. It's happening in your cells. They're making proteins. So back to your DNA and its role in all of this. All of your cells have DNA. Well, a few exceptions. And that DNA is in the nucleus. Some DNA is non-coding DNA. Some DNA makes up genes that are not activated. More about that in our gene regulation video, but we're gonna talk about genes that are coding for active proteins. So how are we gonna get the information from these genes out of the nucleus so that the cell can start producing the proteins that it needs to make? Well, let us introduce you to the amazing work of RNA. We have a video comparing and contrasting RNA and DNA. We'll be brief here in saying that RNA is a nucleic acid like DNA but it has a few differences. Its role in protein synthesis also is huge. 
Before we get into the process, please note our typical disclaimer. We tend to simplify topics, but as always, we hope that you have the desire to explore this complex, amazing process later on to learn all about the extra information that we don't have the ability to include in this short video. In protein synthesis, we can look at two major steps. One is transcription and the other is translation. Transcription has a C in it and translation has an L in it. I remember that C comes before L in the alphabet, which helps me remember that transcription comes first. I like a lot of alphabet mnemonics. Now, transcription is when we're going to transcribe the DNA into a message. In your cells, the DNA is in the nucleus, so therefore we're doing transcription in the nucleus. In the step of transcription, an enzyme called RNA polymerase will connect complementary RNA bases to the DNA. These RNA bases are bonded together to form a single-stranded mRNA. The M in mRNA stands for messenger. Messenger RNA consists of a message made of RNA that has been based on the DNA. We do want to mention that this mRNA is not usually ready to go right away. There's usually a significant amount of mRNA editing that occurs. We highly encourage you to do some reading about that because it's not only fascinating, it's critical for the process to work correctly. So what's something great about being mRNA? Well, in eukaryotes, you get out of the nucleus. The mRNA can go out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it's going to attach to a ribosome. Ribosomes make protein. The ribosome is made of rRNA, and that's an easy one to remember because the R stands for ribosomal RNA. The ribosome is going to build our protein in the next step called translation. You know, you can find a lot of great clips and animations on translation that are just fantastic. We're just going to break down some basics of what's happening. In the cytoplasm, if you look at this, you have all these tRNA molecules available. tRNA stands for transfer RNA. They carry an amino acid on them. An amino acid is the monomer for a protein. It's a building block for protein. Since we're making proteins, we're going to need those amino acids to build it. If you have a bunch of amino acids together, you can build a protein. So it's the tRNA that is going to bring those amino acids together to make that. But wait, how does the tRNA know which amino acids to bring? That's why the mRNA, the message, is so important because it's going to direct which tRNAs come in and therefore which amino acids are transferred. All of these tRNAs are looking for complementary bases. When they find the complementary bases on the mRNA, they transfer their amino acid. When tRNA is bringing in the amino acids, it reads the bases, represented by these letters here on the mRNA, in threes. So it doesn't read one letter at a time, it reads in triplets. That's called a codon. So for example, in this mRNA, the tRNA would read the codon AUG. One of these tRNAs contains a complementary anticodon, which in this case is UAC. All tRNAs that have the anticodon UAC will be carrying an amino acid called methionine. A tRNA with the UAC anticodon comes in to pair with the complementary AUG codon on the mRNA. It transfers the amino acid it carries, methionine. The tRNA will eventually leave, but it will leave behind its amino acid. That's the first amino acid before looking at the next codon. Before we do the next codon to carry this on, if you're wondering, how did you know that the tRNA that went with the AUG codon would be carrying an amino acid called methionine? Well, for that, you will find a codon chart helpful. You can learn to use a codon chart to determine which amino acid each mRNA codon will code for. Isn't it so fascinating that scientists have been able to determine which amino acid corresponds with these codons? I used to have a codon chart poster and just marvel at that. You can see on a codon chart that the AUG codon on the mRNA codes for methionine. AUG is also considered a start codon as methionine is typically going to be your first amino acid in proteins. There are many types of amino acids in the codon chart, but there are even more possible codon combinations. That means there can be more than one codon that code for the same amino acid. For example, according to the mRNA codon chart, all of these mRNA codons here code for the same amino acid, leucine. 
That means their complementary tRNAs all carry the same amino acid, leucine. Okay, so going back to the mRNA, let's try the next codon on this mRNA, CCA. On the codon chart, you can see that codes for the amino acid proline. The complementary tRNA has the anticodon, GGU. And look, there's the proline that we knew it would be carrying. The tRNA will transfer that amino acid and eventually leave where it can pick up another amino acid. These amino acids are held together by a peptide bond and it will keep on growing. Typically at the very end of the mRNA, there is a stop codon. Stop codons do not code for an amino acid, but when the ribosome reaches it, it indicates that the protein building is finished. So the result of translation is that you built a chain of amino acids that were brought in certain sequences based on the coding of the mRNA. But remember, that mRNA was complementary to the DNA. So the DNA ultimately was the director of the entire protein building. Of course, it couldn't have done it without some serious help from mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. Protein folding and modification may occur, and the protein may need to be transported. This can all vary based on the protein structure and function. Another fascinating topic for another Amoeba Sisters video. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. All right, so that was our review of the protein synthesis process. Um, now we're gonna talk about what you need to do next. All right, so we are done with our transcription and our translation um, notes. So now you need to use these notes and finish the um, Target 3B transcription and translation practices, and then you will be ready to go to take your um, Target 3B um, assessment.